everyone and welcome to another conversation over coffee. As you can see, I'm having next to me a royalty, a fandom royalty, Princess Aurora. Welcome, my darling, and thank you for accepting the invitation to, uh, and allowing us the privilege to get to know you a little bit more. Yeah, thank How you. How are you today? Um, I'm good. I'm happy to be here in Berlin and it's sunny and just hanging out with everyone. You came in Berlin, we have to say that we are in Berlin, we just attended a German fetish ball and now we are having a current moment and yeah. having a, a, a coffee, so there is your chance to join us. Yeah, it's the, the best weekend of the year, I think. Did you like it? Is, is your first time when you're coming? Or? Um, my third time. Um, so I had a good time, went to every party. <laughs> okay, of course you do. <laughs> uh, and then to, modeled in the show for Cherry Lake. Oh, I saw you. You were gorgeous. Thank you were you. gorgeous. That very pink outfit, yeah. a very lovely dress you will see probably in, in the pictures. Yeah. Um, but um, again, I want to thank you for, for this and for um, accepting to for people to, to get yeah. to know you a little bit more. Um, the whole idea of my channel is to show that there is much more behind the image. Mm -hmm. And of course you have one of the best images on social Ooh. media and everyone knows you. But um, I'm not sure how many actually know the person that you are. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so uh, this is a, a great opportunity for, for them and for, for your fans to uh, see a little bit more of you yeah. from a different aspect, from yeah. a different perspective. So I will start with, uh, with one simple basic question. Who are you? Oh, that's, um, just a... I think my actual person outside of outside of work, I'm quite reserved more. Okay. I'm not I'm not as um, loud and out there as I am in the dungeon or in work or on the internet. So uh, are you an introvert? Yeah, I think so. I I like I like to be around people that I know and I like to meet new people but outside of work I like to stay at home. <laughs> uh, I totally understand because I'm an introvert myself and um, I, I so relate with uh, with that. But tell me, what do you like to do in, in your free time? What is your favorite activity? Uh, okay, um, my current favorite hobby is roller skating. I do okay. a lot. <laughs> I do a lot of roller skating. Um, there is a, a bar in Manchester that I go to and roller skate around the bar. Wow, that sounds like fun. Yeah, um, with all my my non kink friends, that's what we do: roller skate. And I'm a big cat person as well. Uh, oh, I saw you have some cuties. In I've seen some some pictures. Tell me a little bit more about those. Yeah, so I have a ragdoll cat. He's called Panda. I've had him for ten years since he was a kitten. And one of my personal I think hopes for the future when I do less fetish work, I would like to um, rescue cats and and things like that. Oh, that's so generous and so um, so cute to have as a, as a goal. Um, did you already started to work on that, or is something that uh, you have it reserved for the future? Yeah, for the future, uh, my goal is to. Now I live in the city center in a flat with not much space for animals, but when I get older, I want to have. Uh, like a big garden and have a space just to help rehome cats. Oh, lovely. <laughs> what is your, uh, what are the names of your cats? Um, so he's called Panda. He's, because um, when he was a kitten, he looked kind of like a panda. He's, he's white with um, dark ears and a dark nose. Did you ever uh, love cats or was it 
love at first sight with, with it. Always cats. <laughs> yeah, so you're a cat, cat person. I'm a cat person. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always cats. How would you uh, describe yourself? Um, I think I'm quite a creative person. I like um, doing makeup, uh, things like that. Um, quite once I get to know someone, I'm really talkative and I really like them. But before that, quite reserved. I think sometimes people, when they first meet me, might think I'm not very friendly. It's just it takes me a little mm -hmm. while. To mm -hmm. <laughs> I totally resonate with that. Yeah. <laughs> about things and passionate about um, art and being creative and stuff like that. What is your favourite um, way of expressing your creativity? Uh, it's definitely fashion and makeup. Yeah. So, um, can I understand that from all the pictures uh, are your own makeup, you are doing your own makeup. Mm -hmm. How did you learn to do your own makeup? So, I originally wanted to be a photographer mm -hmm. so I did photography at university um, but then when I was doing shoots for some models they couldn't do their own makeup so I would just do the makeup for them and then I said well maybe I'll learn to do that too so I did a makeup course as well um, and then that helps me in all aspects of everything I do now still photography, video, makeup so everything that is behind uh, Princess Aurora, it's your own work. Yeah. You are doing all the editing, all the pictures. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, sur I'm surprised because I also do, but um, in in the way that you are doing it is so much professional and like I so admire your work. So congratulations Thank for you for so that. Much. Um, how did you did you start with with the photography? Um, at school I did art and then when I left school I was kind of tired of painting and so I wanted to do something that was creative mm. but different so I did photography. Um, I think I remember I was 13 and for that birthday I got a, a good camera mm -hmm. so then I just started practicing I had lots of friends that would let me take pictures of them and then I did it at college and then university. Oh, that's interesting. Do you have uh, uh, vanilla friends or king friends? Both. <laughs> okay, tell me how is that, how can you uh, match, how can you... Um, I think my vanilla friends, because they're all a little bit alternative, they'll be into like goth kind of clothes or um, like Japanese mm -hmm. fashion and things like that. So a lot of them understand the fetish world even though they're not in it so mm -hmm. they don't judge me or those friends they're still okay with it they just don't really come to the pot <laughs> okay but so uh, everyone knows who you are and what uh, what is your job what is your your activity yeah most of my friends know unless I think it will make them feel uncomfortable I don't tell them but most of them know and um, I just tell them ask questions, I don't mind. Whatever will make you feel comfortable is okay. Have you ever uh, had any situation where you just uh, avoided? Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. tell me a little bit about that, I'm quite curious. Um, so I do a lot of Japanese fashion mm -hmm. stuff and some of the girls are young or a little bit like close minded mm -hmm. so I already know if I told them they wouldn't be happy so I just don't tell them because um, unfortunately with the Japanese fashion stuff um, a lot of sissies like mm -hmm. it and the girls worry that sissies will message them and things like that so if I okay. tell them my job they might think that I'm part of that group but it's you know you get men on the internet and they just do things without thinking don't they so uh, sometimes yes yeah. men do stuff without actually thinking 
that's uh, a general truth and it's available for each and every one of you yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> no one can contradict when when they get in a certain state uh, they just don't think yeah yeah it's they, true they just act without <laughs> actually thinking um, tell me how um, did you started creating Princess Aurora mm. how Princess Aurora came to came yeah. alive um, so I loved femdom, I loved everything like that, but I didn't feel like it was me. Mm -hmm. So I'd look at all these women and admire them and think, wow, they look incredible, but that's not how I want to dress. Um, and then I thought more about it and I thought, well, if you are a dominant woman, you should be able to do what you want. So I just thought I'll try and wear pink or wear school uniform or wear things that make me feel good and see how it goes. And it went well. Everyone everyone was accepting, I think. From from where did you uh, did you get that idea that uh, like was it something that you always consider a woman has to do whatever she wants or it was after you experienced certain things and reached to this conclusion? Um, I think it was spending more time around other femdom people mm -hmm. um, because when I would go to clubs when I was like, 18 I would wear what I wanted but I wouldn't if people asked me are you dom or sub I'd say I don't know because I didn't feel like I looked like a uh, dominatrix so mm -hmm. I would just say I don't know I'm just here to have fun and then hang out with more femdom people and they were like well no you are <laughs> you are dominant it doesn't matter what you wear was there any moment that you realized yes i'm 100 percent dominant um yeah i think a lot of going to events seeing how other um dominant women acted and how they were and it just made me feel at home like i felt very welcome and like this was the type of people I wanted to be with mm -hmm. um, because most people when I tell them I'm a dominatrix they go no you can't be a dom you don't look like a dominatrix and it would upset me because I think it doesn't matter what I look like I can still be dominant. Funny thing um, I had something similar said to me a few few days ago um, when someone approached me and uh, said uh, you can't be dominant you can't be a dominatrix because you're too feminine yeah and in in my mind was like do i need to be masculine to be dominant <laughs> or or what it's just the energies the way that i am being built regardless if i'm dressing like very feminine or in a more masculine yeah. way it has nothing to do, it's just who you are inside. Yeah, exactly. So I don't like that attitude, I think, sometimes. How do you cope when, when you find, because in my perspective, these are judgmental people. Mm -hmm. How do you cope when, and how do you handle this kind of people? Um, usually I just, I'm just polite and I just kind of think to myself, I probably won't be your friend, so I'll just say, ah, okay, bye. <laughs> I have a similar thing and I, I have a quote only uh, for free, I'm only polite. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm so good at humiliating and putting people on in their places that I won't do it for free. It's like, true. You, you actually have to pay me to yeah. humiliate you. It's so true. Um, like, I don't know, he saw at the ball this weekend, every party, there was a man lying on the floor asking for people to stand on him, but always in a place that was really dangerous. And every time I tell him, you need to move out of the way, <laughs> like a step and he'd be here. Mm. I'm like, you need to move, someone is going to fall over, but I just, I just don't care. So I was yeah. like, I'm not standing on you for free, move out more. It's, it's very important, <laughs> uh, we play, we do stuff, we do activity, but safety comes first. Yeah. Uh, and that is something that everyone should, should be aware of it and everyone should understand this yeah. that uh is not all about the fantasy is more beyond that yeah talking about uh beyond that um tell me a bit uh, about your childhood from where are you coming yeah. from and how yeah. was your childhood 
I'm from Manchester in England. Um, I didn't really ever leave. Like I left for university, but I, I love Manchester so much. I always say I like to visit London, but I like to live in Manchester. So you're based in Manchester? Yeah, it's like a small London, I think. It's really nice. Um, and I think my childhood was pretty normal. I find it funny, I did go to Catholic school, so okay. <laughs> it's kind of, when I wear the school uniforms and things, it's very much similar to... Can you say that uh, this, the Catholic school, in a way, kind of shame your style, your dominant style? Because I know that you like to play this religious uh, fetishism, something, until a certain extent. Yeah, that. yeah, definitely. Um, it's... My school wasn't very strict, but they did do talks about chastity and... Say, did they? Yeah, yeah. Say, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. What, what school was that? <laughs> <laughs> Go to the school you learn. <laughs> yeah. To, like, save yourself till marriage. And we had talks on how porn, you shouldn't watch porn because the people in it is someone's wife or someone's daughter. or um, So there was a lot of shame in my school about that. So I find it interesting now that that's what I do as a job. So in a way it was something that for you was forbidden and that made you be more interesting. Yeah. The forbidden fruit is yeah. always very tempting. Yeah, exactly. Um, and at school I was kind of always a bit different from everyone else. So I was always just going to go do my own thing, whatever okay. I wanted to do. How are your your parents? How is... Um, my parents are fine. They're pretty normal they're not very conservative they're not um fancy or they're just normal every day um they still live together i don't visit them so much because they they don't really like to go out often so um i hope it's not rude to say they're just pretty boring <laughs> i love them but they're <laughs> boring yeah, well <laughs> Yeah. It is what it is yeah. sometimes, you know, yeah. you, just, you just have to accept, you can't choose your, your family, so yeah. you have to accept how, how they are, yeah. which is a very um, loving thing to do, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not to change them, not to, just, this yeah. is how they are, yeah, so you, you accept are. them. I, I don't force them to come out of the house or do things, and I'm the only one in my family who's uh, quite alternative and different. Do you have sisters or brothers? Uh, just one brother. And he's very, very normal. He doesn't do anything out of the ordinary. He dresses normal, just, yeah. So, do they know about your... Uh, is this, uh, first of all, let me ask you, is this a lifestyle for you or is uh, just uh, a job? Um, so, it's mostly a lifestyle because uh, I was interested in fetish things since I was about 16. So it's never really left my brain mm -hmm. or, you know, most of my friends are involved in it and yeah, it just seems to be everywhere in my life. So uh, how is, more better said, uh, what's the opinion of your family about your life? Do they have any opinions? Um, so they don't know what I do. Um, I they think I do makeup artist and photography still, which in it, a way it is. It's true, yeah. Um, but mostly I don't tell them because they are quite close-minded. I don't think they would understand because they've never been around anything like that. So they don't really go on the internet. I think it's just easier to just not mm -hmm. tell them. What about your, your brother? No, he doesn't. He, he, come, he comes to my house and um, we have drawings and photographs on the wall of some shibari and he looks at it and he goes, that's weird. <laughs> so, are you doing cleaning before family visiting? No, I just leave okay. all the pictures, all the books. <laughs> if they look at them and they, they don't ask questions. <laughs> Have you tried to uh, to be open with, uh, with them and to tell them? Because I assume that until a certain point, uh, it's a little bit difficult for you to have to uh, keep some some things outside and to be very aware what you're talking with them and how in a way you're behaving mm. around them? Um, not really uh, because they never really ask me questions or 
anything like that so I've never felt like they've been curious to know more about what I'm doing I think my parents are just happy that I have somewhere nice to live I, I have you know enough to do holidays and have a good life and that's all they're concerned about until a certain point I think that's uh, what is actually important yeah. It doesn't necessarily matter what you're doing because if it's something that you truly like and you truly enjoy, yeah. you will be okay eventually. And something from my perspective, someone's activity, it doesn't define their personality, their yeah. persona. It's much more than that. Um, how much of you would you say that you are sharing on social media? Um... The authentic yeah thing. so the obviously the style and a lot of the verbal humiliation is quite authentic to me because um, in <laughs> in nightclubs sometimes if you know if men are a little bit inappropriate with my vanilla friends I will always be the one that steps in and tells them to go away <laughs> um, and I try to put little things up every now and again, like sometimes my cat or what I'm doing for the day. But um, I do know Twitter, most people are there just to see the videos and the, the latex and things. Do you have um, a favorite um, fetish? Mm. A favorite activity to film or something? Um, I really love sissy transformations but it's very rare I get someone that comes to me and they will give me enough time to do a really good transformation. Most of them just okay. want a quick, you know, just five minute makeup but if it's up to me I'll spend like an hour just doing makeup and hair and dressing before they will give me enough time to do a really good transformation. Most of them just okay. want a quick you know, just five minute makeup, but if it's up to me, I'll spend like an hour just doing makeup and hair and dressing before play. When when you're doing it, how do you feel? How does it make you feel when you're interacting? Um, I like, it's interesting because I'm not very maternal, so I don't like to do adult baby stuff, but with the sissies, I feel quite caring sometimes. Um, I get some clients that struggle with their gender, they're not sure, and I think they come to me to feel feminine and that makes them feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Obviously you get the ones that want to be humiliated and look silly as well, but I do really enjoy making someone who has to be masculine most of the time feel good about being feminine. How does it make you feel in, in the moment that you are turning them into something else? Because in, in my case, I'll make an example, in my case it feels like I'm back to, to my childhood and I'm playing with my living dolls, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, this yeah. time are, are my dolls but are like living. Uh, back then it was just like Barbie and Ken. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly similar to that. It, it feels fun and it's really... I don't know, it's like entertaining to see the difference and that they will just sit there and let you do whatever you want to them. I like that. What is the thing that you do not like the most? What is something that annoys you? Um, I don't like needy... Pay attention. <laughs> this is to be pay attention. <laughs> uh, I don't like needy subs or subs that don't communicate well so I know they think you want to hear do anything to me but I hate when someone says do anything you want because I want the session to be enjoyable for both of us and if I have no idea what this person actually likes it's very frustrating mm. I don't like it. Uh, is it a red flag for you when you hear do everything I don't have limit on. Yeah, every time I just ignore them. It's, there's no point to reply. Or I get a lot of the emails where it's please ball bust me as hard as you can with no safe words and I just ignore them. 
there is no such thing that everyone has to understand that there is no such thing as limitless person we all have a certain yeah. limit and we all have um certain practices that either we don't like or we are just not capable of doing yeah um now let's let's bring it back to your childhood uh do you remember what was your favorite game oh that's interesting did you have any um i was always kind of into video games mm -hmm. and things like that so i liked to play a lot of um Tekken, if you know okay. it. Yeah. I've heard about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's my... I still play it now. That's like my my favourite game. Um, a lot of Nintendo, stuff like that. Um, I did I did leave the house a lot, but also a lot in the house on video games. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Um, and what about your adolescence period? How were, were you as a teenager? Because in here, I'm probably the most interesting transformation happened. Yeah, um, I always say I don't know how I turned out the way I did because where I lived in my family everyone was very normal but instantly I wanted to listen to rock music and I wanted to dye my hair and wear different clothes and studs and chains and spikes and so where I lived I was the most different from everyone um, and luckily nobody really cared so I think I got really fortunate, especially in school. Um, I think because I was good at art and I would help people that they didn't really care that I was different because I was also nice. <laughs> okay, so for you it was a, a great experience being different. Yeah. Uh, how did you, did you feel? Um, did you ever ask yourself, why am I different from my other colleagues or I did some time, I think specifically with sexuality when I was um, 14 because when I was younger it wasn't so accepting to be bisexual or anything but straight so I would have friends and I would think do I really like this friend or am I attracted to this friend and then again because of school I would kind of just push the feelings away and say no you have to be straight you have to be straight so that was my main you have to be yeah straight. yeah okay. that was my main struggle i think as a teenager and when did you drop that i have to when i left school so when i was like 16 that's when i had my first girlfriend and i was like it's fine and nobody cared nobody said anything uh, so i felt like i was worrying all that time for nothing Sometimes uh, everything is in, in our mind, not necessarily in, in reality. Yeah. In a way, we create our own reality. Yeah. Um, I know that you have a relationship. I want yeah. to know details about that. Yes, um, so I'm very fortunate. I have my boyfriend I have been with for eight years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And he's very supportive. He doesn't judge my job he's never jealous or a pest or <laughs> he comes to fetish events with me and he has his own friends i have my own friends is him into the the bdsm the the fetish uh, scene or he's just joining you because um we met through um the fetish scene so... tell me where did you met um so we met online on um it's a really old website called alt.com before FetLife and all of these things so we met on there and we were talking and again um, neither of us really knew are you dog, are you sub and I think we both just are fetishists we both just together just like to explore fetish that's that's a beautiful thing to, to find someone that you can grow next to yep. and at the same time learn about uh, each other. Uh, do you remember the first meeting that you had? Yes. Um... How was it and <laughs> where was it? It was, it was good. Um, he picked me up in his car and where he used to live it was in the countryside so on top of some hills. So we drove to the top of the hills and we kind of sat um, outside on top of the hill just talking about all the things we were interested in and 
it was nice to have someone that just wanted to talk and not go straight to the bedroom. Have you uh, met this kind of men that were rushing you straight to the bedroom? Yeah, that's mostly on those websites. So okay. that's why I would never meet up with them because I thought they were too pushy and most of them were not good quality. So I just avoided them. He was the only one that I met. How, uh, what made you be attracted to, to him? It, what was it? Um, he was very interesting. So he didn't want to just talk about fetish or sexual things. He liked similar music to me. Um, at the time he was a DJ. So he was doing like events and stuff like that. And it all just seemed like he wanted to do the things I wanted to do too. Like, um, go to Torture Garden or Antichrist and big parties in London. Uh, what was the first uh, event that you went together and how was that? Um, so I was 18 and we went to Torture Garden in Manchester. They did their first event in Manchester, we went there. Um, I had a really good time. Um, it was funny at the time, we were just friends because I had a different boyfriend. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I don't think it's interesting, it's getting interesting. Yeah. I am here, I'm making myself comfortable. Let's hear that. <laughs> and I told my, my boyfriend, and I said, do you want to come? And he said, no. And I said, well, I have this friend. I have been friends with for a long time. Can I go with him? Is that okay? And he said, yeah. So he had his opportunity to come and he didn't want to. <laughs> You know, some things don't happen just by coincidence. Yeah. Everything in, in this life, uh, I believe that it happens with a, with a certain purpose. Yeah, that's how I feel about my boyfriend, that no matter, sometimes he had a girlfriend, sometimes I had a boyfriend, but no matter what, we always would come back to each other. So I think it was meant to be. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Are you in an open relationship or are you monogamous? Um, we, we don't really have a set rule. It's more if we're somewhere and the vibe feels right, we'll do things. But we would never have like another partner or anything like that. So it's just, it's just us two, but we will experiment with other things if everything feels good at the time. Um, what would you say is important in a relationship? You clearly have some experience by now. Uh, what in what was it that it helped this relationship, your relationship with your boyfriend, to resist, to evolve? To... Uh, he's very open-minded, mm -hmm. and he's not very possessive or jealous. So. In my whole relationship with him, he has encouraged me to do things that I want to do. He's never tried to hold me back. And it's the same with him when he wants to do something with his career or um, he wants to try something new. I always push him to do it as well. So I think the key is to want the best for each other and don't hold back and don't have insecurities that stop the other person from being the best person they can be. How can you stop your insecurities? How can you not have insecurities? Um, it, it is quite difficult. Um, I think especially in the fetish world because you go to these events and there's so many beautiful people around and everyone's quite open. Um, but for me, because I have trust in him, um, I know no matter where we are, what we do, he always will come back to me so i just have it in my like inside that i trust him enough so you let him be free yeah. and then he decides if he's gonna be back to you or not if he'll choose you or yeah that's so so beautiful and i'm so happy that you find a person like this mm -hmm. which is the ideal person if, yeah if you ask me uh have you ever been jealous um We've, we've done things with other people and I've never been jealous because it's been people that we don't know and we never see them again, never okay. meet them again. Um, I think the only thing that kind of sometimes irritates me is if in 
a club if a girl that doesn't know us, doesn't know our dynamic, mm -hmm. sometimes he's had his crotch just grabbed and it's more for me, not jealous, it's more I, I, I think that's inappropriate and I get angry that someone would just do that. That's your property. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. someone else's property. <laughs> I'm like, if she asked, I would have said yes, but she didn't ask. How do you react when you get annoyed? Um, I'm quite good at just, just brush, brush, brush it off, and um, be as nice as I can to get away from the situation. I think. Nobody can say something bad about you if you were as nice as you could be. If, if they're being awkward or mean to you, if you just be nice, then you'll never be in the wrong. Let's go back to, to the, the adolescence part. Um, how was your interaction back then with your vanilla friends? Um, did you ever felt uh, misunderstood did you have situations yeah um my vanilla friends although they're into alternative things their mindset is still very vanilla so even now when i explain things from my work or, so i still have the same friends and back then when i was trying to explore things i felt like i couldn't share it with them um because they don't understand Still now, if they ask me for stories of things that happen at parties and do you like, share stories with them? Not from not from like work things, but like if I've done filming or if I've been to a party like in Berlin, I tell them the kinds of things that happen and they find it so shocking and they're like confused um, and I can't understand why it's so difficult so for them. They, they don't understand what you're telling them and you don't understand why they don't understand yeah because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me it's all normal now why do you think people don't understand the feelings um they're very i think they're stuck in their way that they will just have normal um normal sex normal interactions and they don't understand how someone could enjoy anything besides that. I try to explain. It's just the same as a personal preference in food. Some people like some food, some people don't. And you don't need a reason why. You just need to accept that they like it. Okay, this is uh, such a beautiful way to, to put it, to, to explain it. Um, what is the biggest misconception that you have faced? All my friends. Or, or, or the most common. Um, when I tell them what I do as a job, they always say, Oh, you get paid so much money just to beat people up. I'm like, no, that's not. You got the wrong idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they think all I do is um, kick people, whip people. I'm like, no, it's so much more than that. I think actually whipping and things is maybe 10% of... The whole the whole life yeah <laughs> i always like to say that uh bdsm is just 20 percent activity and 80 percent psychology yeah, exactly. on on the back uh because it's it's all about the feeling it's all about the mindset not necessarily the activity itself even that sometimes that is adds up yeah. but it's not everything it's not as as doms, we are not all the time in whips and chains and uh, latex and all. We are normal always. Yeah. Um, how are you dressing in a normal day? Um, casual. I like to wear a lot of oversized t-shirts. Um, if it's hot. Are they pink? Yeah, still okay. a lot of pink. <laughs> still a lot of pink and a little bit of black. It's mostly pink, white, black. It's From so where cool. this pink fashion start? Um, I why love pink? Barbie was when I was young. I had Barbie dolls. Um, I, again, I remember maybe being too old to have Barbie dolls, but not telling anyone that I still had them. Okay. <laughs> 
I still have some. Yeah, yeah same. <laughs> I'm still keeping them as, as a memory. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not sure what else. I just always like girly things. Like, the more girly the better. So I never understood when I was younger girls that were tomboys because I was always pink and girly. Even though I liked to play outside and do things like that, but just in pink. How does a normal day look for you? Um, so usually in the mornings, I first thing I do, I'll get up, feed my cat, because <laughs> cats yeah, have priority. Yeah, he's the first, <laughs> the first one, um, and then have some breakfast and check my emails. I do my emails in the morning and at night if I'm not too busy. And then um, most days are either some kind of editing, uploading, it's very boring doing that bit, but... Compared if, with what yeah. others might, might think, yeah. that we have this very easy lifestyle and very glamorous, but yeah. only if you know the amount of work that is behind yeah. our brand, our image, how much is um, how much work are you putting in? So I will do clip, either film, edit or upload twice a week and then the rest of the week is for dungeon sessions but I have Sunday as my day to do nothing so every Sunday is my day for me um, but I always, my diary if it doesn't fill with work things, I'll make sure I fill it with fun things so everything is balanced. So you have to keep yourself occupied, you yeah. like to be occupied. Yeah, I like to do things and then usually have three or four days to do rest and then start again. Uh, is your boyfriend helping you with, uh, with all this work, with uh, creating Princess Aurora? No, sometimes he'll do the camera for me if I need, so if I do a filming day in the dungeon and you can't just leave the camera on the tripod, he'll come and do the camera for me. Um, he's just mostly supportive that if I have a session late at night, he'll take me and sit and wait for me so I don't have to be on my own or if I have a hotel session, he'll come and wait you know, nearby and just make sure everything is okay for me. How is that? Uh, he is so supportive. Did uh, he ever had or ever were any discussions about you interacting with, with other men? I'm asking because there are a lot of men out there that um, have difficulty in understanding this mm -hmm. aspect. How can you be in a relationship with a professional dominatrix and not be bothered that she's interacting with, with other men? or? Um, so he was actually very important in me starting because um, again it's something I had interest in and then I did webcam and like phone chat and he said to me there is a dungeon near where we are why don't you just get in touch and go see if you can do it so he encouraged me to start doing real sessions and, and I think because he you know, he had some friends who are dominatrixes mm -hmm. as well. Okay. He, he kind of knew that a client is a client, and even when you have clients that you get close with, um, the ones you get close with, they know the boundary. And he's met a, a, a few of my close clients, and he gets on with them well. So I think it's because he knows that in the dungeon, it doesn't to outside it's just in there the relationship I have with them so the boundaries are very very clear and yeah. never blurry yeah that's a very important thing mm -hmm. and especially in in this field um, the, having clear boundaries and respecting those have you interacted have you had any submissives that uh, were trying to push those boundaries yeah did you ever felt uh, having performance yeah I always make it very clear if I have subs that I kind of start get close to and they want to do things like come to parties with me or come to my home I always make it very clear to them that these are my rules and you have six of them and if you don't then that's it and it's it's a privilege to be given 
more closeness outside of the dungeon mm. um, but I have had some subs you know straight away and they say please I want to be owned and I want to da -da -da. and they say well you have to just wait and it takes time and they don't want to wait so then they go and I think it's okay I didn't really lose anything because they didn't want to work for the privileges. So do you see that as selfishness? Yeah, definitely. And really like not understanding what it really means to be owned because it's a lot of work. It's not what does it mean to be owned? Um, for me, I, I only have one owned sub and he has been serving me for four years and I only just collared him this year after four years of perfect behaviour. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> so for him, he never asks too much of me. He never bothers me outside of work. Um, I still am happy to talk to him and, you know, about normal things. How was your day? How was my day? But he is always looking for ways to make my life better. So on his own birthday, he sends me gifts. <laughs> As it should yeah. be, as it should be, because... Um, and he always pays attention, like you say, to my Twitter when I talk about things that I like or where I'm going or what I'm doing, he pays attention to everything. Um, he even, during Covid, he sent me a bouquet of flowers every month. Oh, that's so sweet of yeah. him. Yeah, so he earned, he definitely earned the collar. Um, what does it take for you to um, accept someone into uh, into your your life as your submissive. Um, so there is a good separation, I think. the The dungeon clients, um, I see most people if they're not rude, if they're polite, if they just follow all my rules and speak to me with respect, which some people don't. And then the ones that get to be a little bit closer to me are the ones that they talk to me um, in a way that I find comfortable, that makes me, it doesn't make me feel awkward or like they're trying to make me be Princess Aurora 24 seven. Um, and the ones that want to do things for me that maybe just aren't sexy, like they want to buy me dinner or they want to buy me something totally normal for my house. One sub even sends treats for my cat. So <laughs> just more more thoughtful things I like. That's lovely. What are your passions? You you mentioned earlier about the uh, skating. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that. How did you did you start doing that? So I started during COVID lockdown I had nothing to do and near my house there was a big car park that was closed so I could skate there whenever I wanted um, and I think I don't go to the gym so I think my dungeon sessions were really good exercise and I wasn't getting that so I started roller skating and then I think I got quite good at it and I didn't want to stop it um, there's a big community in Manchester of roller skaters maybe 200 people wow. <laughs> wow. Um, and then loads of spaces started opening up for like uh, roller discos and stuff so I think it's it's fun exercise so I keep up with that. What if someone would have to think about you now? Uh, what would be the things that uh, you would like for them to, to associate you with? Or, better said, what would you like to be associated with them, in general? Um, I think, again, like you say, pink, Barbie, things like that. Um, I like dolls and cute stuff, but I think it's, you can be cute and still be mean, so. 100 yeah. <laughs> it's actually funnier to be cute and at the same time to be harsh and mean because yeah. i like it on, on myself and when i see people being so surprised they wouldn't expect so for me it's just like 
Huh. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm having fun. <laughs> I like that better. Yeah, shock people. Make them scared before. <laughs> but in a positive way. Yeah, scared. Yeah, We're yeah. not talking here about the... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> things, I don't know, being very sadistic. Everything is consensual yeah. and yeah. everything consensual. has to be consensual and safe and... Yeah. Um, Tell me, um, what would you like your legacy to be? Um, I think a lot of being true to who you are and doing what you want because it doesn't matter, you don't have to fit a set idea of a dominatrix. Right. So I want people to think of me as someone that just did whatever they wanted, but rather than copying what was already there. Do you feel any pressure uh, to be in a, in a certain way? Um, I used to when I started because I was worried about um, the ladies that I was working with, with they would judge me because mm -hmm. um, in session I'm quite fun, uh, I'm not very serious, I laugh, I have fun, I have a good time and I know when I started some people didn't like that. When I was doing training some people thought it was inappropriate. How would you describe the femdom community? I think in Manchester I'm really lucky because um, the Fetish Emporium, everyone is very supportive. Um, so I was mostly trained by Mistress Sheba, uh, Mistress Buffy Brown and Mistress Sapphire. And anytime I had any questions, and still now if I have questions, they'll show me anything I want to know. Very supportive. They never feel like threatened or judgmental. They just, for me, I've always just wanted the best for me. How important uh, would you say it's to have the community support? I think it's really important. Um, because when you start alone, you don't know everything and safety is important and there's things that you would never know if you didn't connect with other people. Um, even all the filming I do now, I have a lot of thanks to Mistress Azada because she was the first person that asked me to film and I felt I had only just started, maybe I didn't know what I was doing, but she was confident in me, so that made me feel confident. You, you did great. I remember first time when, when I met you, it was in, in London at the Fandom uh, Ball, and you're so enthusiastic, and you came to me and was like, like who are you? I don't know. <laughs> but then I remember uh, back then I used to have this Marilyn Monroe kind of vibe, and you had this beautiful wig in, yeah. in a way, but like longer. Yeah. Uh, okay. She, she's on, on my wife. <laughs> yeah. let, let, let's get to know. And I have to admit that I'm I'm very proud of the way that you evolved. I'm proud of you. Yeah. And I, in a way, I would say that I kind of like followed you because I saw that there is a lot of potential in, in you. Um, did you have any, um, at some point, any doubts that you might reach to the level that you are now? Um... I, a little bit when I started because I was really unsure if people would want this style of dominatrix but I did know it was very popular in America so I thought surely Europe must want it as well mm -hmm. um, so eventually I just kept going and my viewpoint was if you keep trying eventually you'll get what you want Totally, and, and I always uh, support that and encourage that even through this, this channel um, to be your authentic self. Don't try to copy someone just because it looks in a certain way or you love the image that they have or their work. It, what suits to someone will not suit you, yeah. clearly. And um, did you have any, uh, any issues in understanding the, the path that you want to go. Because sometimes it's, it's difficult in, in a world where, let's face it, uh, the patterns are kind of the same. Yeah. So you're coming in there with a different pattern. Was it, how was it for you? 
Um, so I started, because I started doing webcam on phone, straight away verbal humiliation was really natural for me. Mm -hmm. So when I still was learning how to do um, in-session things, I found it really easy to just carry on talking and that would make people pay attention to what I was saying rather than if I'm struggling to figure something out and now I can do most things so I, I but I still sometimes I put music on but mostly I just talk and talk and talk <laughs> what music do you like to hear? what is your favourite? Uh, do you have any favourite song? Um, I'm a big Lady Gaga fan Okay. I love, I love Lady Gaga, but then I love I like rock and metal, um, so like Nine Inch Nails and stuff oh, like that. Oh, I love Nine Inch yeah, Nails. Yeah, I love it. Really good. Um, and I also like um, K-pop, like Blackpink and stuff like that. So, so many different... Do, do you have a favourite song? What? I'm not too sure. I think right now... Maybe um, I like uh, 911 from Lady Gaga's Chromatica album. What is your favorite drink? Uh, alcoholic drink. Any drink. Right. <laughs> um, to to drink alcoholic, I usually have Jack Daniels. Okay. Um, and Coke, and then I'm quite quite boring. Um, most of the time I drink water. Um, and then if if I'm out somewhere, I'll have a cocktail or something. I really like cocktails. What's your favorite dish? I love Japanese food, so probably sushi. What is your favorite uh, piece of cloth? That I own. Um, it might be boots. I have my my own sub bought me for our anniversary a pair of um, leather boots um, Versace with um, um, gold detail and they're my favourite favorite thing I own. What is your favourite lipstick? Oh, at the minute I really like um, Nikita Dragon. She has a brand called Dragon Beauty and her lipstick is my favourite. What is your favourite um, activity, vanilla activity? Outside of sleep. Outside like, of sleep. Yeah. Um, I like, I just like going out for food. I really like going out for a nice meal, um, somewhere fancy. What is your favorite way to relax? A spa. Always a spa. Okay. Yeah. What to do at the spa? I'm a fan of massage. I like a massage. Um, luckily near me, well, maybe I think it's like two hours away, there is a spa in the middle of the countryside in a big old house. And they have a hot tub and a pool that's outside but on top of the hills. So I like to sit in there and you can see all the sky and the hills and it's so oh, peaceful. So yeah. I love that. Now, what is the difference between you, the girl that you are in, in your normal uh, life, in your daily face life, and Princess Aurora? I think Princess Aurora is um, more loud. <laughs> um, Princess Aurora is probably more like demanding and bratty. Um, my normal life uh, I'm still confident, but I just kind of avoid people mostly. Um, I like to I like to go to parties at my normal self. I like nights out, but only when I really feel in the mood for it. But then fetish events and it's more Princess Aurora. I just go to everything. <laughs> How did you came up with the with the name Princess Aurora? It's really silly because um, it's my favorite Disney princess. Okay. It's Sleeping Beauty. So she's called. Funny thing, that's my favorite childhood yes. bedtime story. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> so um, I knew I wanted to be a princess. And then I said, well, I'll be my favorite princess. Will the princess evolve into a queen in the future? 
I think in the future maybe goddess or something like that. But what are your future plans? What do you want to achieve? Um, eventually I would like to do a lot more filming. I would like to help other people with filming and, and do videos for them and stuff like that and maybe have a, a filming studio. I don't really want my own dungeon. I love the dungeon that I work from, but I would like a filming space. Where do you see yourself in, let's say, 10 years from now? Um, I probably would still be um, a dominatrix. Um, more, more filming though, and I will move, I would like to move to the country, away from the city. And what advice would Princess Aurora give to the girls out there? Um, if you want to be in the industry, I think my advice is to learn, learn a lot before you start. Make sure 100% it's what you want to do before you start and don't think it's a way to get money quick because um, you won't last very long. So if you come and you know it's what you want to do and you appreciate fetish and you understand fetish then you can last a long time and enjoy. So this is so so important what you just mentioned and I would like to have this as a conclusion for, for this interview. Don't get into the fetish for money. It's yeah. not quick money. Yeah. Femdom is not about this. It's about so much more. So I this is this is just a fabulous conclusion. Yeah. I want to thank you for, for this lovely interview. I have to, to say that um, it was always great to have a conversation with you and I was so excited to have you on, on here. Pause. <laughs> yeah. Always the perfect time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, this, these things happen, you know, it's everything natural is everything light is nothing is edited nothing is um even even the discussion that we had is just it, it flow it's yeah. it's normal no questions in advance yeah. so that you know all the answers that princess aurora here gave are just spot on yeah. for the moment uh genuine princess aurora i thank you very much and uh where do people can find you um, so my Twitter and Instagram are Nylon Aurora and my website is surfprincessaurora.com Go <laughs> make your um, submission to Princess Aurora, subscribe to my channel and uh, we'll see you on, on my next episode. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. you.